There was a very important time when I was a teacher that I had the aha moment. Just like students get the aha moment when they finally understand something, my aha moment came when I was finally able to uncover how I could get my students to not only believe that they were capable of learning math, but to actually achieve that. And the way that we did that was through goals. But it wasn't just writing down a goal and putting them on a sheet of paper. There's actually a really funny video on my channel 10 years ago that I just uploaded for no good reason about swearing in class. But if you actually watch the video, the first minute and a half is me talking about goal setting. And that's something that I continue to do in my education career. But it wasn't until about five years later that I was actually able to get my students to buy in to what I was trying to have them achieve. And the way that I did that was by not just doing goals at the beginning of the year and going back in time, but by actually doing the goals each and every chapter. So when students started at chapter, I gave them what we called an assignment organizer. And if you want a copy of the assignment organizer, I have a free copy for you down in the link below. There's a non-filled out example that you can use to recreate or adjust however you see fit. And so we would start off the chapter, we would spend about 10 minutes inside class handing out these assignment organizers. Pass out the assignment organizer in class. I would ask students to fill in their goal. And typically most goals were I wanted to receive A, B, or C, but I didn't ask students to limit it to a grade in the class. It really could be anything that was tied to their overall goal from the beginning of the year. And if they always wanted to make changes or adjustments, then I was always open to that. Now, once we had their goal, I told students to write down three things that they could do to achieve those goals. But again, you don't have to be tied into what is typical. Let's say your goal is to receive an A. How are you going to receive an A? I am going to do my homework every day that I have math class. I am going to study for an hour every week just on math. I am going to stay after school twice a week. I am going to meet with my friends and do a study routine. Whatever may be the case, however your class or course is structured, create some steps or some routines that are going to help you achieve the goal. And then the last thing we did is we had a reason. And because the reason is basically the glue that's going to hold your goal and your steps together. Because we all know everybody is motivated at the beginning of the year, and it doesn't take very long for that motivation to dwindle. By the time the end of the year comes, there's probably nothing more than we want than to get away from school and get away from studying our teachers and being inside the classroom. The school year can sometimes be stressful, tough, and seem like never ending work. But a lot of times when we have to put in that extra hour to study or we have to go and get questions answered, a lot of times we don't wanna do it. A lot of times we have other things we'd rather be doing, but we can always relate to the reason why, why we're trying to achieve our goals and what is that going to mean to us? That's gonna help us when we lack the motivation. Okay, and that was it. Now, you might be thinking, well, Mr. McCulligan, anybody can do that. Anybody can just go through the motions, write down their stuff and easy peasy, how is that really going to transform the way that I approach school? Because I've done this before. I've written down goals each and every time at the beginning of the year and I don't stick with them or nothing really changes. Well, I agree. If you're not going back to those goals and you're not reflecting on those goals, your steps and your reasons, everything is going to be put to the side. The way that this really came together was because when we would take a test or assessment and they did not perform as they expected or wanted, they had to reflect on their steps and their goals. And depending on the assessment, I would allow students to drop quizzes. I would give students test retakes. I would give them test corrections. I had a lot of opportunities for students to improve their grades but there's one thing I would not accept. I would not allow those opportunities unless I was able to sit right next to the student and go over their goals, their steps, and the reviews. And yes, as you can imagine, there were some pretty awkward conversations, but there was also some very genuine conversations that came from students. Students knew that they couldn't fake a conversation sitting next to me. They knew I could tell when they followed through their steps. It's very difficult to tell me that you studied, did all of your homework, you studied hours every night, and you got help, but then you bombed your test. Now, anything is really possible. But majority of students that struggled with a test or a quiz or exam were able to point to certain steps and realize and understand that they didn't do as well as they could have done, or they just didn't simply do them at all. And we said, all right, well, now for the next chapter, we are going to revise that. And we are going to continue to work on that to improve that because we have now identified something that is impacting our understanding of the curriculum. And if we focus on that, we can improve our grade and our test. Now, being a high school teacher, of course, there there were students that came to me more than one time to get test corrections and retakes. And a lot of times they would be for the exact same reasons. I'm not a pushover, ladies and gentlemen. You can make the mistakes once and you can struggle twice, but if you're not making any effort to improve your learning, then you'll get denied dropping of quizzes and test retakes. And yes, there have been instances 
where students were denied. But the overall majority of students that did not receive an A on a test or a quiz that applied for some grade recovery or grade help reflected with me on their goals and made improvements where we didn't have that conversation the next test or quiz. I think it's really important to reflect on this learning journey and reflect on what you need to do to be successful in class. Because I think we all know what we should be doing, but it's really important to have some accountability when we're writing down our goals. And while this took some time during class, I cannot express to you how much of an impact this made on student understanding as well as student buy-in to the learning process. So I'm not here to tell any teacher how to grade their work or any student on how to go through class because a lot of students never really had to reflect on their goal. They were either, they did what they said they were going to do and they otherwise did well in the class. But if students don't struggle in math class, they're usually gonna have some sort of struggles in life. And the ability to be able to create goals, to make a game plan to achieve those goals, to attach a why, a reason for why you want to achieve those goals and to have some accountability to help you reach those goals is such an important lesson that I want you to take away from this video. It not not only made me a better teacher, but I know it made a, such a bigger impact on the students that were in my classroom. And I hope you can use the assignment organizer that you can download for free below to your advantage to help you out with your classes. Feel free to let me know when you achieve those goals. And if you want more tips on how to be a better math student or on tests or exams, go ahead and check down the examples down below or go and check out the next video I have for you here. Cheers.